whatever or trying to wake her up and things like that. So just kind of these almost possession-like stories. Right. I think, too, what was neat about that was how he said his mother looked different. You hear about different voices and things Mm -hmm. like that whenever somebody thinks uh, somebody is possessed. But it was the look different that was that was unique and strange here. So, so and so this is essentially almost like Chad Kalix, uh paranormal origin story, his saying you know his, uh, his paranormal autobiography, his uh, paranormal autobiography, basically saying you know uh, the the reason the, the reason I'm in this field of paranormal, the reason I ghost hunt, the reason I'm involved on this is because it's part of my background, but it all goes back to us moving into this house, and this is what changed my life and and things like that. So basically, Chad decides to make a film. American Ghost Hunter, where he basically goes back to Iowa, and at this point, basically, it's pretty clear that Chad is really just trying to stay away. Like, once he got older and left, like, there wasn't a lot of happy, fond memories from this house, so he, he's, he's been away for a while. Well, I think, too, that he was almost afraid that his presence was creating some of the pain and agony his mother was going through, or at least that his mother felt like her presence was creating more pain and agony as well, which I... I, True. Yeah, and yeah. There's a scene. So, so Chad comes. Chad decides he's going to make a, a film about uh, what was going on at the house. Um, obviously, of course, it centers around the mom. The mom's the one that is most affected by this. But Chad, he's been away for a while, and while he's been away over the years, his parents have been telling him that things have calmed down, that things aren't haven't been so bad, and it. it what is later revealed is they're basically they basically told him that so that because they just didn't want him to worry. So Chad comes back to make this film, and things start happening again. And Chad thinks it's because of him. He's basically like, when I was here as a kid, stuff went on. I went away. You said things quieted down, and now I'm back and it's starting up again. But of course, right, exactly. He, so he's blaming himself almost. So he tries to keep away. But, but at then, one point but, in the film, he he leaves. Right. In fact, that we're halfway through the film, and if not for the little clock at the bottom, told me how much time I had left. <laughs> I thought I thought we were done. Yeah, I thought that was the end of it. It was uh, his mother had had a an episode, if you will, and then Chad's packed up and he's in the car, and they were playing that particular piece where <laughs> you know his mother's talking about uh, what she's going through and. Oh right, and but 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 that's when they reveal. They basically confess to Chad and say, more or less, we lied. Correct. I think his father called him. Yeah, right? and I think he even said, you know, this that's not. Uh, well, no, I think the mom said it in the kitchen. The mom revealed it when she was she was having some kind of episode, and she's and Chad said, I'm, "I'm leaving," and the mom's like, "Why are you leaving?" And he says, "Because right. these things always seem to happen when I'm around." You you said everything was fine while I was gone, and that's when they're like, right, "Actually, Chad, we yeah. lied. Right. Things things didn't really calm down. We just didn't want you to worry about us." I just couldn't remember. I was trying to remember how they got him back home. Because if I recall, he was in a car. I thought on his way out. <sighs> yeah, he let. Well, I don't think. I think he wanted to finish his film. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes yeah, he basically left the house that night. Was like, I'm leaving, but he's in the car with Ryan, and, he, and I don't, I don't right, think he's a filmmaker. Yeah, I don't think he left to leave. I think he just left to get for that night, for that evening, to just to get away from the situation. No, maybe we were supposed to believe that he was leaving for good. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, I didn't get that impression. I think he was just like, I'm just, get, I got to get in the car and take a drive and clear my head, kind of a thing. Huh. Um, so then the story basically goes on. Chad uh, essentially in, more or less investigates his house. Um, they take the the stance that you know that there's there's some type of possession going on with the mom, and um, Ryan suggests you know hey you know we might have to start thinking uh, exorcism. Correct. Yeah. And and so um, Ryan through paranormal state is connected to Lorraine Warren. Now this is where the the, the documentary. Has some, I don't want to say validity, but it brings in some even more star power. Let's just say that. It brings in more star power with Lorraine Warren uh, from the Amityville Horror story. Right, exactly. Story. Um, she was a frequent uh, guest a lot on Paranormal State. But th- it was kind of get interesting that um, Chad said that during while making this movie, this film, his parents informed him that at some point years ago, a man came to the house who said that he worked for Lorraine Warren. Dr. And he, Jackson or something. Yeah, like and that. he said he was there to interview them to see whether Lorraine would come and help them. So he interviewed them, he took all these notes, and they even had like copies of his notes, um, but Lorraine never came. And so like they felt abandoned by Lorraine. So all, all this time, the parents thought that Lorraine wouldn't help. Then Chad's upset because Chad's like, Lorraine said years ago she would come help my parents. Well, it turns out... Uh, 
so Lorraine arrives and says, I know nothing about this. I don't have a guy who works for me. Right. So if she a, actually knew that it was this Jackson guy. Apparently he was going around everywhere pretending like he was part Yeah, of the she knew of the guy. She knew who the guy was, but she's like, that guy has nothing to do with me. If he said he was here on my behalf, he wasn't. And I'm sorry that he said I, that he never sent me a letter. He never informed me. He was just using my name, essentially. Uh, so Lorraine comes, and they're basically like, in order to get an exorcism, we have to have enough proof on camera to get the church to sanction it. I don't know if this is how these things work. This all goes back to the paranormal state stuff. This all goes back to Ryan Buell and, and Lorraine Warren and and uh, all the exorcisms that they did in the shows and what they say. So we're just following the path of what they're saying. But they said they basically say, Chad, in order for us to get a sanctioned exorcism, to get a priest in here and conduct an exorcism, uh, we have to be able to show on film yeah, that she's possessed. Video to the Catholic Church is, yeah. is the claim. Which so, which then becomes kind of the probably the 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 climactic point of the oh, documentary sure. where they're basically Chad, you need to go in there and basically piss off your mom. You need to get her worked up, and you need to if she's possessed, you need to get her to that state where this demon, you know, starts lashing out at all of us, and, and we can. Record it and capture it. Well, it wouldn't have made much of a film without the uh, yes. without that part. That's well, that's sure. th- that's the theme in all of these things. Yes. Let's not forget that. Right, he's a filmmaker. He's a filmmaker. Yeah. Um, so now the one thing is, so in every one of these, Chad, well, Blood Risk Guy's different, so I don't want to say in all three, but in this and especially Sir No Face, Chad's all about. He tries to come across as a skeptic. And it's just like, okay, you're trying to come across as a skeptic, but at the same time, like, you also have to re- you, 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 you have to tell a story because if the story goes nowhere, there's really no film to put out there. He's a skeptic who his whole life tried to make a pencil move on his desk and <laughs> yeah. very clearly had a strong believing in, uh, belief in something. In paranormal. something. Yeah. yeah, and then we'll get, and we'll get into that in Blood Red Sky and, and that show. So, um, so at the end of the day, they, they perform the exorcism. And then it all just wraps up nice and neat. Um, Mom's better now. <laughs> right. And roll credits. Basically, without being a spoiler, yeah, uh, they, they do have some follow-up to the story. It's maybe not as clear-cut as Mom's better now, but maybe Mom's made some progress. Mom's made progress, yeah. yeah I think maybe is the, is the better way to go about it. Or no, it. she hasn't had any further episodes. Um, now, when I the reason I brought up Chad being a skeptic is he says, you know, I want to find out, is something physically wrong with my mom? Does my mom just have, like, a mental disorder? Is she possessed? Um, and he tries to figure out, so even uh, with the hauntings themselves, he's trying to figure out whether it's him or the area. He says that this town in Iowa, um, that there's a, it's, this isn't just isolated to his house. That there's a lot, of, well, first of all, he says there's been a lot of just, a lot, a lot, a lot of, um, like, teen suicides yeah, in this town. Crazy. Even to the point where, like, he brings up a, uh, a news broadcast, a news broadcast, where he sh- plays a clip where, like, at one point they were specifically the the news was focusing on this town in Iowa, saying that it, its suicide rate was the highest of any town in the United States. Of course, the numbers are lower, so one out of three hundred <laughs> is going to be high. But I thought too, what was interesting is even people that would come visit and talk about the events. So Mary Beth, for example, the mm-hmm. girl that's with him. The day she got back, a good friend of hers died in a car accident. So right. So he really thinks Yeah, that weird this, things happen. And some of this actually ties together with Blood Red Sky, which we can talk about, okay. you know, obviously, in, in part two. But uh, he certainly thinks that his mother's vibe, if you will, can, you know, has outside control on things, which I thought was an interesting theme mm-hmm. as well. So what they and, – and what they pointed to was a thing where, like, this city once was, like, a Native American land – and, you know, there was a Native American burial ground nearby, and they built over it and things like that. So they they start wondering if there's that that aspect. They do a ghost hunt in the middle of the movie, which actually made the movie more a little bit more interesting because they went on a ghost hunt where things happened. Which is why which it is, was in there. Which is what always happens um, when it's on TV. And... Um, but that was basically the, the, that was just one of the things that they decided to do. They said, you know, I, we I want to just see, is it just limited to my house, or is it, or is it the, you know... Is there things going on in this town in general? So that that was thrown into the the documentary as well. Well, there's the part too about how his brother experiences these things at his brother's house. Yeah, you know, has it at his own house. We didn't bring up the brother yet. This this well, this that, was probably I, just to me. I think the scariest scene of the movie. It for you? Did you no, let's talk about let's talk about the scene with the brother because for me, 
this, I mean, it's a good documentary. It's not, none of these are like scary per se. When you see Sir No Face for a brief moment, it's scary. Um, it's at least, these are stories. Yeah. They're stories about, you know, interesting topics, but, um, the stuff with the brother kind of really actually freaked me out. Well, a lot of that freaked me out because a lot of what the brother experienced is actually some fears that I, that I had. So I lived in a haunted, haunted dorm in college. I have no, I've almost no doubt a little less now but i almost have no doubt that there's something going on and one of my biggest fears is that they'd haunt me in my sleep Mm -hmm. and of course uh, in the in the uh in the movie and i'm not real good with names but brian i believe is his name right the brother's name i can't remember (laughs) brian and ryan i wasn't a helpful thing for someone who doesn't know names but i think at one point in the middle of the night brian was actually like pinned down we'll just call him brother brother brother, it, brother if, it's, if it's not brian we're we're killing this yeah, yeah that's true. that makes <laughs> us we'll just call like him the brother. i'm pretty sure it's brother the brother <laughs> uh brother calic was actually pinned down uh while he was asleep and, and hearing sounds and, and that to me is just is particularly terrifying yeah it's terrifying i kind of dismiss it uh, only in the extent that you know that can be ex- they you know people try to explain that oh that's just night terrors that's sure, uh, that, that sleep apnea that's, 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 that's. but no what freaked me out so first of all and it's interesting Chad's brother's definitely different absolutely he's not um he was having textbook panic attacks yeah but they, he's not your he's it. not your typical like so, very social butterfly this is like a an odd dude he's Chad's no brother's reality odd. Fred, that's for sure he, yeah he's an odd dude but no what freaked me out was he was playing back the audio files he was taking oh, was the bible verses oh, and playing them backwards yeah he had one point he played that's the what freaked me out the lord's prayer backwards which I don't was, know why it scared the heck out of me, man, but he was playing the Lord's Prayer. He, like, recorded the Lord's Prayer on his computer and then was playing it backwards, and it, it – these things sounded so demonic. Right. If something can – if you can say, well, this is what something demonic would sound like, it was terrifying, and even it sounded like there were, like, words and phrases being spoken. Because I don't even think at first he said that. He played – he's like, listen to this, and you're like – you're hearing these w- words and phrases. He's like, yeah, that's just the Lord's Prayer backwards. Yeah, now to be fair, when he played it forwards, the Lord's Prayer was almost incomprehensible uh, and also sounded demonic. So mm-hmm. I, I used to study the Lord's Prayer in all the forms of English, the Old English, the Middle English, the mm-hmm. Modern English, the Old Latin, the Germanic. And I was hoping maybe it was one of those, but it was no version of the Lord's gotcha. Prayer I'd ever And that's heard. what I figured. And it's, and it's one of those other things. That it, it was just a part of the movie. I was like, I got a little bit uh, tingly. I was like, "This is just it. Just it. It sounded. Oh, if, some, if if you can hear something like words being spoken that yeah. just make you feel not right, like that was going on. It's, that was odd. It's definitely definitely worth a uh, a good Google search to type in uh, Lord's Prayer backwards. I mean, if you're even remotely interested in what the hell we're talking about, I definitely think <laughs> that's something you need to do. All right, so. Now that we kind of summed it up, what we're going to do here, real quick, is we're going to talk about what we liked. And didn't like, and there's no way that we're going to remember everything, but the, the things that come to our mind, what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it, and then we'll wrap up at the end on what we personally think was going on or, or things like that. But Matt, let's start with you. What did you first, what did you tell us the things that you liked about it? Sure. Tell, and then tell us things you didn't like about it. Well, first and foremost, what I liked is, is Chad's a filmmaker, and the guy is a brilliant filmmaker. Whether you believe what he says or not, his films are worth watching because he is brilliant. What I did like about this was the spiritual journey, if you will, of everybody involved. Uh, and again, without being a spoiler person, there, there's a significant, I would say that the film, more than anything else, is about a spiritual journey. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, you know, his mother's possessed by some sort of demon. And of course, that in itself is a spiritual battle and a spiritual journey. And then you watch Chad's own spiritual journey. So that part I loved. Uh, always been fascinated in things like exorcisms and, and, and at the risk of sounding like a sick human being, uh, interested in sort of demonic attacks uh, and things like that. Because it, it it's just something I've never experienced and hope to God I never have <laughs> to experience. But if you believe in a, in a God and if you believe in a devil, you almost have to believe that these things are possible and so i thought it was interesting to watch uh it basically <laughs> seems if that made me feel like i was watching the exorcist or exorcism of emily rose i mean it was definitely an interesting watch so definitely enjoyed that part of it what i what i didn't enjoy is that chad does didn't do a great job in this film of buttoning things up and i think you'll see that as a as a somewhat common theme 
that as fascinating as it is, he leaves a lot of holes. And you're almost sitting there going, man, I wish this were just 45 minutes, one hour <laughs> longer, and, mm-hmm. and you could give me all of these details. But again, a two-hour, two-hour, 45-minute flick just doesn't uh, draw as many people. So.